All right, first and foremost, I want to give all the praises and honors belong to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakar Kadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, in whom I reverence and honors to the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. And I want to say to Wadi Yahawa, to Wadi Yahawa by Sham Yahawa Shai, to Wadi Yahawa, to Wadi Yahawa by Sham Yahawa Shai for allowing me to minister to the elect. All right. I'm not going to be on this. As I already said, I already made that announcement. I'm not going to be on this for too long. Look, brothers, we've got to use wisdom. To be on these devices for the space of an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, even 40 minutes can be harmful to your system. Right? So we've got to move in what? In wisdom, because Esau, what has he done? He's weaponized these devices. But we still going to teach this word. So Lord willing, I hope this is edifying. We're going to speak about the Gentiles. Okay, I'm going to speak about the Gentiles and the Gentiles were known as Israelite foreigners that were receiving the word. Okay, so let's start off on Acts 17, actually 18. And we're going to read, hold on, hold on, hold on. Acts 17, Acts. yes, Acts 17, we're going to read most of it right now this is acts chapter 17 now when they had passed through ampipolis and Apol Ap apolina right excuse me and apolina and these were different regions okay in Greece, you had um, Israelites in Greece, right? Different, different lands, just like today. I'm an Israelite, what? Living in Britain. They came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. There was even synagogues, temples of the Jews in this, these different regions, which you would class as Gentile regions. And poor as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures so why was Paul going with them why was he reasoning with them because you wouldn't be reasoning excuse me you wouldn't be reasoning with a heathen you'd only be reasoning with one of your own tribe or tribes okay and Paul and it says three Sabbath days reason with them out of the scriptures the same scriptures that we're reading opening and alleging that Mashiach must needs have suffered so he was what mentioning who was he teaching was he teaching himself he was teaching Yahweh Shai that he must suffer what and died for what the sins of Israel he was letting them know that look Yahweh Shai Mashiach he is our savior and you come back to him it's the same thing we're doing today and it says and must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that and that this Yahweh Shai Mashiach whom I preach unto you is the anointed okay and some of them believed and consulted with Paul and Silas and of the devout groups of great multitudes and chief women not a few so it says some of them consulted not all some right so Paul he was winning winning souls and that's our whole duty to the Israelite foreigners to every, anyone that hears this word excuse me <coughs> if it resonates with them, come back to your by Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? And that's our duty. We're not out here for no reason. We learn this word, and the scripture says in Timothy, also teach this word also to those that be able to teach others. So that's our whole duty. Right? And it says, Baba Kisha. And some of them believed, and so were Paul and Silas. Right? Silas was what the helper of Paul. And devout Greeks, a great multitude. So there was devout. Why did it say devout? Because they were the prior to them hearing about this truth. 
they were very devoted to what? Idols, heavily devoted. And of chief women, not a few. But the Jews which moved, believed not. Here we go. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy. These were the same, but hold on, these were the same Jews that were in the synagogues within these regions. Within these regions. Right? Took upon them, believed not, moved with envy. So they, they didn't believe, so they were moved. They were envious that you had what the other tribes that were scattered waking up and believing. They were envious. Took unto them certain lewd fellows of a baser sort. The word for lewd fellows is basically is, is hoodlums. Right? So they gather together some hoodlums. Some roadmen, and it's the same thing. Sadly to say, it's the same thing in this truth. You got men that are very, very, very carnal. They're just the way of thinking. Not spiritual at all. May, they may come up with a few good points here and there, but when it comes to the, the real spiritual things of the scriptures, they can't receive it. These were hoodlums, lewd fellows of the baser sort. Base means of the lowest sort. You know? They were brutish. And there's such a thing as having brawns and brains. That's a plus. When you have brawns and brains, wisdom but you have those that are just base these, these were in other words these were road men right so the jews they brought, brought together some road men of base assault in other words those that were carnal and gathered a company what a, it sounds like a gang and set all the city on an uproar do you see the similarities between Paul, Yahabashai, Stephen, Jeremiah, you would always have Jews that would be against the, the, the prophets and the disciples and the apostles and they would all always raise up a crowd to try and turn them against the prophets. This would always happen, it was a regular occurrence in the scriptures. And set all the city on an uproar, all the city. So brothers, this is why we've got to prepare our minds. These things are going to happen. These things are going to happen. Where you're going to have others that are going to try to turn others against you just because the message that you hold, what you stand for. Wait, this word, I'm telling you, this word is, is powerful. And set all the city on an uproar. So in other words, these Jews, they were able to convince others that Paul, what he was doing weren't, weren't right. Out of envy. And assaulted the house of Jason. I believe Jason was Paul's cousin, right? And sought to bring them out to the people. Uh -uh. Sought to bring them out, right? So they were causing up an uproar. And when they found him not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that they have turned the world upside down and come hither also. So they, they were threatened by what was happening. Because many were being taught of Yahabashai. Or they wouldn't have said they turned the world upside down. So guess what we're doing? The wicked of our people, yeah, and Esau, we're turning your world upside down. And that's why a lot of people, they can't take this truth. It's too much. I'm telling you, these, these words hold weight. Our own words don't hold weight. The words of the scriptures hold weight. That's why I always say, always stick to the scriptures. When you stick into the scriptures, what can anyone say? always stick and stick to the scriptures don't go outside of them the moment you go outside of it you're in the carnal realm now always stick to the scriptures okay so their world was being turned upside down why because your house was being taught and that shows you you had certain jews they were just comfortable the way they were right greek greek customs but these were israelites still but they were still moving with what envy against those that were supposed to be what, coming into the fold. <sighs> Excuse me. 1 verse 8, and they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. Hold on, verse 7, whom Jason have received, reads all due contrary to the seeds of Caesar. So they, <laughs> they were running and saying, look, they're not, doing, they're not doing what Caesar does. They're not doing what Esau does. It's the same individuals. In the UK, I don't know what you call it in America, we call them coons. 
you call them coons, sambos. And you always have those that get comfortable, that wanna, that wanna, that wanna um, come against us and stand up for the oppressor. These will do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is no other king when you have a shot. So they were being threatened by what? You have a shot being taught. Caesar was their king. And this shows you this this also shows you the validity of the scriptures that the scriptures are true because it mentions Caesar. And anybody that does an account of history, you know Caesar existed. Okay? And this is how you know the Bible is hundred percent accurate. And it says, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, and they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and the other, they let them go. And brethren, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who come and differ went into the synagogue of the Jews. So there was another synagogue. In Berea, what well, you gotta understand, the synagogue, it wasn't just in Jerusalem. Now that was the main synagogue where the elders were, which if you had any serious, serious matters, you would go to what the elders in Jerusalem to inquire. But there were synagogues everywhere. Alright? And it says, Baba Kasha, you come and differ went to the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily. These men of Berea, they were known for what? They're studying, proper inquiring. And that's what you have to do when, when we give you these scriptures. You, you have to do the search for yourself. You have to really get into it. And instead of, oh, I'll just believe what you're saying. No, don't just believe what we're saying. Look into it. Study for yourself. Oh, excuse me. And Paul and Silas went by night unto Berea. And these were more noble than those of Thessalonica and they received. In other words, they were more noble. They were more, what's the word, what's the word? Disciplined in their way of life. Right? They were not like them lewd base men that the scriptures was mentioning. They were more disciplined. They were more stoics. Right? And with all readiness of mind, so they were ready, they were unwilling to be taught and actually what? Do their homework. And search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Excuse me just a minute, let's go to Timothy. It says daily. So they wanted to know, they wanted to know more. Excuse me just a minute. See if we can find it. I know it's in Timothy. That's why you've got, you've got to take time out to study. You can't just believe anything that's told you. You have, you have to take out time. So lucky, just a minute. So this is 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show that's approved unto the most high. Not, not unto other men, not to impress anybody else. Unto your how by Shem you have a shy. Show yourself approved. You ever seen on these working vans it says approved? So when you look at these vans it says approved, you're gonna hire that man because this is approved. They have what validity. Now okay. Study to show thyself approved unto the most high workman that needeth not to be ashamed because you know what you're talking about. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So that's what them the church in Berea was doing right excuse me just a minute right they were studying right excuse me just a minute let's go back to Acts all right Acts 17 and 12 therefore many of them believed also of honorable honorable women which were Greeks of men and not a few. Key thing, Greeks of men and not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of the Mosai was preached at of Paul, at Berea, right, they came different and stirred up the... So hold on, hold on. 
when the Jews at Thessalonica, that region, had knowledge that the word of the Messiah was preached at Fort Berea, they came thither and stirred up the people. Bro, there's a pattern. There's a pattern. So them, it was the same Jews from Thessalonica, when they heard that he went to another region, they were what, spreading words. There was you could you could imagine what they were doing. They were slandering, slandering Paul. Oh, don't listen to him. He's preaching. How much? It's the same thing going on today. The same thing. They were trying to. You had Jews that were in opposition to what the disciples were doing, the apostles. They stirred up more people. Again, right? They stirred up the people. Okay, they came there for also and set up the people, and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were by the sea. So the brethren said, Look, Paul, get out of here, go into the sea, go to another place. But Silas and Timi Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas. And Timotheus will come to him with all speed, they departed. Right? And now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. Hey right, bro, hey. Right. Everybody, everybody has um a favorite apostle. My my favorite is Paul. My favorite is Paul. My favorite is Paul. It's because he it's because of his beginnings. And because of his beginnings, it's like it was his duty to do more. Remember, he was persecuting the church. But Paul's life, it was whew, he was zealous. Out of all the apostles, he was the most zealous apostle out of all right and you can't think obviously you can't forget you have a shine and he went to um now he's in Athens by this time Paul waiting for them at Athens his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city what he given to idolatry so here it is Paul's in Athens now you gotta imagine that you gotta vision this he's looking around he's looking at the, the temple of Ju temple of Jupiter right Mars you know, all these fools, idols, he's looking around, saying, why? What happened, what happened here? <laughs> you know, Paul's a Benjamite as well, you know, which he's speaking in Hebrew, by the way. And he's just looking around, you know. His spirit was stirred up, angry at what was happening, right? <gasps> Athens, remember, Athens was full up of idols, full up. It was, the, it was the main um that was the main place of idols Athens at that time and it says he saw the city what he given to idolatry therefore disputed he in a synagogue with the Jews but there were still synagogues within them regions so there were, that means there was Jews within the, the regions okay and this is a lot of individuals they can't get their head around that yes there were still Jews in these different regions all right And with the devout persons in the market daily and with them and with them that met with him stop right here it says daily stop right there just a minute you know what? I don't even need to get that out Proverbs 1 that's why it says you go out into what the streets and the marketplaces the Agora wisdom what cry out within the streets and the marketplace that's the marketplaces the Agora right and it says, Baba Kasha, verse 18, when certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a set of for strange gods, but he preached unto them, Yahabashai, and the resurrection. So it says, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans. So you had philosophers back then, right? Just how you have philosophers back now, again right and these modern day philosophers i believe i know who they are it's the same individuals you a lot of you hear about polite suren seti um what's it young pharaoh uh tarak nasheed um who else who else who else who else there's so many different names i can't remember all these names but there's so many different names all right the other guy that dressed the aim what's his name amos i forgot his name that guy that used to be that ponytail <laughs> he dresses up like an egyptian these were the same individuals right and i believe mars hill is in new york the modern day mars hill is definitely in new york right because what do they do they stand around debating what different idolatry different um ideas 
it's the same thing again today right it's the same thing again today and that's how you know who the Israelites are you can't make this up nothing is new underneath the sun okay and I'm not making that doctrine you know I believe Mars Hill was in New York but again you just got to look at what's going on what's going on you know these men in New York they stand on what 34th Street these different streets standing for hours debating about different doctrines different ways of life excuse me so on Acts where was we Acts 17 and when this is philosophy of Epicureans the Epicureans were they tested things by they were basically you could it was it was a form of Satanism because they lived off the principle as if you're doing something and it feels good to the flesh carry on doing it so that's what an Epicurean was right an Epicurean is someone that feeds the flesh and if it feels good to the flesh if it doesn't feel good to the flesh uh, stop doing it if it feels good to the flesh keep doing it really that was another form of what Satanism so they were not really disciplined dis dis disciplined okay and that's what an Epicurean was and of the Stoics encountered him the Stoics were more strict in their way of life you wake up to this truth you're forced you're forced you ain't got no choice you're forced to become a stoic right you're forced to be um disciplined right and a stoic was what very grounded rooted studied a lot didn't eat a lot of junk food they were very disciplined in their way of life okay and it says Baba Kashar, Baba Kashar. And when they encountered him, and some said, What would this babbler say? In other words, some just thought he's just talking rubbish concerning Paul. Another some, he seems to be a setter of four for strange gods. In other words, he, he seems to be bringing um, other gods to us. Because he preached unto them Yahweh Shai and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Ariopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine of their speakers is right so they, they want to inquire on what what was Paul really speaking about what was he teaching all right and you know how it said new doctrine because remember they dibbled and dabbled with different doctrines where of their speakers is and for that certain bring it for that bring us certain strange things to our ears we would know therefore what these mean for all the atheists and strangers world which were there spent their time and nothing else right but to either tell or to hear something new, what? A new doctrine, a new way of life, just like you have today. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Right? And the superstitions is things like when you were younger, you may have believed the tooth fairy. You know, when your tooth falls out, you leave it by the side. Your parents say so you leave it by the side, right? And the tooth fairy's gonna take it and you gonna get, we're gonna give you a pound. I used to believe in that. So that's an indoctrination of superstition. Alright? Halloween, these are superstitions. Christmas. Oh, Father Christmas came and um he went and brought presents. He came. He broke in the house which what is that what you're teaching is that what you're teaching your offspring he's going to break it he's going to come down the chimney and break it out you know these were superstitions and people still believe these superstitions today okay but as i passed by and behold your devotions why is it said devotion because they were devoted to these idols they worshiped them these idols were everything to them I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown power. So why did they have a inscription? Why did it say unknown power? It was a tag, it's a scripture, a writing. Because they read, they never knew of that power, but that's why they said unknown. And that power was being presented to them by who? Paul. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him that I declare unto you. The most I that made the world 
and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord, you have a shy heaven of heaven and earth, dwelling not in temples made with hands. Right? So Paul is saying to him, look, you're not going to find the Mosai Yahweh of Shai in these temples. Right? In these whorehouses, the churches. Okay? Even though they have a Bible in their hand, neither is worship. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gave all life and breath in all things. Right? I have made one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation and should seek the Lord Jehovah Shai and if happy they might fall after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us right ah and it says though he be not far from every one of us let's go to Romans Romans, famous and famous that we be not far from every one of us. Romans 10, why was that said? This is Romans 10 and 8. But what say if it the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart? Right? That is the word of faith which we preach. Now let's go back to Acts 17 where we was. And 28. For in him we live, in we have a shot, we're constantly alive. Constantly living without you have a shy, you're not really living. Well, you're living, yeah, in the physical, but you're not really living spiritually. Spiritually, you're not really living. Let me check the time on this as well. Spiritually, you're not really living without you have a shy, you're not really living. Once you have your have a shy, you're living, right? That's why it doesn't matter what the carnal things dropping everything now doesn't matter the carnal thing that is what does once you're in your habasha you're living okay and it says Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets where do you think most of the poetry came from Greek Greek Greece right the acting most of it came out of Greece the acting and so forth your philosophers, your poets, and, and most poetry as well. Rap is another form of poetry. Yeah, I'm not not rap is another form of poetry. Rhyming, meaning, and once upon a time, the rap in the 90s it used to mean something. There was more competition, right? And it says, "For we are also his offspring." Have said we are all those Paul was letting them know, look, you're not Greek, you're the offspring of what? Israel, Jacob, Abraham, Jacob, Jacob, what? Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Okay? But as much as we are the offspring of the Most High, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto God. So Paul was obviously getting on them, saying, look, look, this God you have, that's, that's not, that's not going to do anything for you. Okay? Or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Right? And at times of risk ignorance, the most I winked at. Right? There was a time he Yahweh should just wink at it. Right? Just like when we were in the world, a lot of things we were doing, even back then, Yahweh was winking at that. Because he knew when you were going to come into the truth and wake up. But now come on, if all men everywhere to repent. Right? Same thing we're saying today. Now we're commanding every man everywhere to repent. Come back to your Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? That's that's the message. You ask us what our message is. It's the same thing Paul was saying. Right? Now you are commanded to come back to your Yahweh Shai. Repent. Okay? And it says, Because he have appointed a day in which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom had he ever ordained okay wherefore he have given us assurance unto all men in that he have raised him from the dead teaching you how much you see and when they heard of the he wasn't he wasn't paul wasn't teaching them of any other poet he wasn't teaching of the poets he wasn't teaching of any other thing that was going on today you got men talking about Kanye. their whole thing for the latest two weeks three weeks they've just been talking about uh, kanye mess <coughs> the 
that ain't gonna get you saved. Bro, the guy is, he's of the world. He, he sold out his family, right? He done a deal, he made a deal with the devil. Why are you concerned with West? What do you wanna be concerned with? You have a shy, right? That's what Paul was teaching, you have a shy. That's what the apostles were teaching, you have a shy, right? Excuse me. A lot of mucus today, bear with me. And where was we? Because you have appointed a day in which he would judge the world. And that's what, what do you think Yahweh is coming back to do? Judge the world. That's why you want to be right with Yahweh Shai. Stop worrying about what others think. You want, we want to be right with Yahweh Shai. Because we know he's coming to judge the world, which he made. In righteousness by that man whom he have ordained, which is Yahweh Shai. Well, if he have given us assurance unto all men, in that he have raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. Okay, it says it. Some mocked. Another said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So you're always going to get that as well. The scriptures in the last eight and second Peter's, you shall have what? Mockers. Walking after their own lust. You're going to have those that mock that don't believe. So what? As long as you believe. So Paul departed from among them. How about certain men clave unto him and believed among which was Dian Dionysus, right? Dionysus, right? And Abiopagite, right? A woman named Demeris and others with him. These are common Greek Greek names, okay? Greek titles. Why? Because they were in Greece, okay? Um. Excuse me just a minute. So we're done with that. Let's go straight to Galatians now. Because there's always been a big, 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 big uh, contention based on Israelite foreigners waking up. And that's why it's only a spiritual, only a spiritual man's going to understand. A carnal man's not going to understand. Excuse me just a minute. Incense went out. A carnal man ain't going to understand this. A carnal man's going to be looking at it. Well, Hold on a minute, he looks like um Stone Cold example. Stone Cold Stone Cold Steve Austin. You would have cut Stone Cold Steve you, I'm sure you know who Stone Cold Steve Austin is. An old time wrestler. You would look at him and think, oh hold on, blue eyes, bald head, a few tattoos. Looks like a typical Edomite. But guess what? He's an Israelite. And some may ask me, well, how do you know that? By your spirit. <laughs> by, by the man's spirit. But it takes a real spiritual man to discern that. Not, not everyone can do that. And you can beg to differ. Right? But you have Israel that's scattered everywhere. But hold on, look at his skin. The scripture says you don't judge by the outward. We're judging the inner, we're judging the man's spirit. You know? And you may, uh, you know, take a little drive. I say, what? Well, but does he does he like jerk chicken? Or you know, you may start scoffing. So you're always going to have those that scoff against those that wake up, all right? And that's why we you want to be humble, because here it is, you're a Jew, raised up on the customs, you know the laws, but then you're saying, well, no, these they can't make it because the way they look or the way they were grown up, and you may not even believe in your Shai, but you may have the laws, the laws, and guess what? That same individual you're looking at. He might be saved, <laughs> you might be destroyed. So you see how Yahabashai does this. This is not of men. This is of Yahabashai. This is not of men. We're going to go into Galatians. It's Galatians 3. Oh, foolish. Galatians. Whoever be bewitch you that you should not obey the truth. There was constant, constant bewitching going on. Bewitching is what a manipulation tactic. That you should not obey the truth before whose eyes you have a had been evidently set forth crucified among you. Okay. Risk only I would learn of you, which is only what you have a in faith, receive you the spirit by the works of the law or by the heaven of faith. So Paul was questioning me. Well, how, how are you receiving this salvation? Is it by the law or is it by the heaven of faith? What I was presenting before you, which is what? Faith. Because you never knew no laws prior to the faith. Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Because Paul was teaching them, 
look, it's according to your faith and the other things you're going to do. And it says, Baba Kasha, are you foolish? I'm begun in the spirit and now made perfect by the flesh. Hold on, you started off just with the faith, believing. Now you're making it like you, you're going to gain salvation by the flesh, by the law. Right? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if yet be yet in vain? Because that means, look, they were woken up by what the faith to believe in Yahweh Shai. Now they want to act like war is because of the laws, because you had Jews that were sneakily coming to them and trying to subvert their minds, saying, no, they're probably saying, don't worry about believing in Yahweh Shai. No, just keep the laws. No, you have to believe in Yahweh Shai. That comes first. Bear me just a minute. This bandana keeps going loose. The main thing is faith first. And if you have faith, you're going to be doing all the other things that are pertaining to the law. It's Galatians, Baba Kasha. Galatians 3 and 5. He therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you. Do you feel it by the works of the law? Hey, this is heavy. Or by the herod of faith? So even the miracles. How are miracles done? Was it done by the works of the law? No, because we know the Pharisees, according to the laws that they had, and some of them were so-called keeping, they were not healing anyone. <laughs> right? They were not healing anyone. Right? Well, in the Old Testament, what did you have to do? Go to what? The temple. Offer up a dove and a lamb. And that's as far as it went. But again, Paul was letting them know, were the miracles done by just keeping the Lord? No, it wasn't. It was done. The miracles were done by faith. The faith in Yahweh Shai. Even as Abraham believed the Most High, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Even Abraham, the belief that that alone was counted for righteousness. Know you therefore that they which are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. All right. But hold on, ain't ain't we all children of Abraham? No, those are of the household of faith. So there's even a separation within this truth. And the scripture for seeing that the mouth would that the most high would justify the heathen through faith. Whew. So the heathen and those that look like the other nations, what are they going to be justified by? Keeping the law. Hold on, they just woke up. Why aren't you teaching them about Yahweh Shai? That's what they would be justified by. Oh, you believe in Yahweh Shai? That's it. You're going to make it. You're going to be justified if you continue in that belief. Okay. And it says, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. The scripture foreseeing that he would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, Indeed shall all nations be blessed. So then they which are be of faith are blessed with the faith of Abraham. For as many are as the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curse everyone that continueth not in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And it did become a curse. Read Deuteronomy 20, 28 and 15. It became a curse. Moses said, look, if you won't follow these what? Rules, these laws, what's going to, it's going to be a curse to you. Deuteronomy 28, if you will, it's going to be a blessing unto you. Right? So it says, curse everyone that does not continue in the things that are written. Right? And that's why what? We're still under. Well, if, you know, you know, you know what? You know what? What happens when we go off? We get jacked up. So we're still under that, that curse of the law, but guess what? That was wiped away through Yahweh Shai, and you got to believe that. And that's where you have what the new covenant. That's another lesson in itself, right? Because we broke. That's why these curses came upon us. Because we broke the law. We broke that agreement. Okay. But that no man is justified by the law and the sight. See, no man is justified by the law and the sight of the Most High. So no man can say, well. I've kept this law today and I kept that law yesterday and today I'm going to keep uh, another law which is not a wicked thing it's good to keep the law but it's just that you're not going to be justified that by that alone because if you were justified by that then why would you have a shiny to come on the scene to die for your sins if, if you were justified by the law itself if you were justified by the law then you wouldn't need to offer up them sacrifices in the first place <laughs> if you were justified you wouldn't need to do that in the first place 
was because you were going off. That's why you were. That's why you were sacrificing these things because you were going off. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them, right, shall live in them, right. Mashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Read it again. Mashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law through his blood. Right? Being made a curse for us, but it is written, curse everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the best of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Right? Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man does not know. And you know what? There was actually something else I was looking for. So we pretty much went into that. Right? There was something else I was looking for. Alright. See if I can find it. See, yes, this we all that's what it all comes down to. Not about you boasting, because you, you hear men say that all you hear individuals say that all the time. The law, the law, the law, the law. And they'll be the same ones putting a, a razor blade, they may not do it now, putting a razor blade to their head. The same man speaking about the law, but they inwardly have some secret hatred towards their brother. That's why men like that are gonna they're gonna have to be destroyed. Let me check the time. And we're going to have to shut off. That's about it. Right? We're going to shut off. Lord willing, this was edifying. And until the next time, shut a to the hopeful elect. Shut a one.